In today's episode, we're going to be discussing feedback surveys through HubSpot. Feedback surveys are a service hub professional and enterprise feature. Now more than ever, it's really important that you continue to gather feedback from your customers to find out what it is that you're doing well and where you can improve your processes and your products in order to continue to delight your customers. In order to set up a feedback survey through HubSpot, if we navigate through to service and feedback surveys, and from here, we can see all the previously created surveys. But if we navigate up to create survey in the top right hand corner, we can see the four different types of surveys that we can use. So you can use industry standard surveys, such as customer effort score, which is a really useful way to discover how easy it is for your customers to get help when they require it. You have the customer satisfaction survey, which is feedback basically around any part of the customer experience so that you can find out how they found might be the sales process, might be the after sales process, but it's just a really good way to make sure that your processes are working for your customers. Finally, there's the net promoter score, which is basically a measure of customer loyalty. Anyone who rates you from nine to 10 is essentially what we class as a promoter. So these are the people that are likely to go out and shout about your business. Anyone who rates you a seven to eight are what we class as passives. So they're neither going to shout about your business, but they're also unlikely to talk bad about your business. Anyone below a seven is what we would class as a detractor. And these are the, likely the people who would advise people not to come to your business. It's really useful to have this information because you can start to work with your detractors to improve your relationship with them and also work with your promoters in order to generate more leads. The final type of survey available in HubSpot is a custom survey. So from here, you can sort of amalgamate the other industry standard surveys, but also add your own questions into the mix as well. If we create a custom survey, for example, we can choose a different delivery method. So we can either deliver this via email, or we can deliver this via a shareable link, which you can then put on a standalone page on your website. If we choose email on this occasion and click create, this is going to build up the survey creator tool. So we have five different options at the top. If we start on the left-hand side with email, this is essentially the email that the customer is going to receive when you send out this survey. So you can set the survey language, survey company, the from name and the from address. And this will most likely be picked up automatically from um, your HubSpot settings. You do have the use of personalization tokens as well. So you can personalize each survey as it goes out. Once you've set your copy, if we navigate over to survey, what we have here is essentially a drag and drop style builder. So we have a host of different question types, such as ratings, overall sentiments, radio buttons, check boxes, drop downs, etc., as well as some of those industry standard NPSs and CSAT scores. On this occasion, if we drag and drop a rating question into the survey builder, as you can see here, it's going to ask us to set up the question. So on this occasion, I'm going to put something on the lines of overall, I got lots of value from our recent kickoff call. I can make this feel required if needed so that I can force a customer to actually answer the question. And further down, I can create a feedback property against this question. And what this, what this will essentially do is allow you to capture the information within HubSpot so you can further use it later on. If I click create feedback property, it's going to automatically set it as a feedback submission information in terms of the group and it'll automatically pick up the label as a question that I've previously typed out. So if I click next and then create, as you can see, it's now loaded up the feedback property, set the lowest value for zero and the highest value for 10 as default. Once I've finished setting up my survey, I can then navigate to the thank you page. And this is essentially what the customer will see once they've finished answering the survey. So it's just a generic image with some generic text, which is editable. Following this, we can then set our recipients. You can do a survey based on any customers that were created more than 30 days ago. You can set your own enrollment criteria from scratch based on contact, company, deal, and ticket properties, uh, along with email addresses and feedback submission properties. Or you can set it from a static list. So if I just create a static list temporarily, You can see how many estimated recipients it's expecting. And once I'm happy with this, I can then navigate over to automation. By using automation, I can set who's going to be notified upon the submission of the survey for the responses. So I can do it based on the contact owner. I can do it based on specific teams, or I can do it based on individual users of the portal. So in this example, I'm gonna set it to myself. I can also set a survey reminder email to be sent out automatically if I tick this toggle. And I can set the time scale for that from here, from one to seven days. Finally, I can also create workflows on the back of feedback submission surveys. If I was to navigate over to this previously created workflow that I've set up, as you can see, this, the enrollment trigger is based on 
this particular survey name, which is Hub Fuel Test Survey. And what it's going to do is create a follow-up task upon submission of that survey and assign it to myself. So once we have everything set up, we can then click Review and Publish and then Publish again. And this will then send out that email for us. So in the background, I've previously set up this Hub Fuel Test Survey. And if we go into this, we can see the number of responses I've received, which is just one from myself. We can analyze the performance and the responses that we've received for the questions. On top of this, we can actually analyze the email performance as we would any normal marketing email within HubSpot. So as you can see, it was sent to one person, 100% open rate and 100% click rate. On top of this, if we navigate to the tasks area of HubSpot, we can see that task that's been created using that workflow, which is to follow up the Hub Fuel test survey based on Connor Meller answering the survey. And we can see that task is created here. And that is feedback surveys using HubSpot. Thank you for watching this episode of Hub Fuel, guys. Look forward to speaking to you next time.